Good morning. It is Saturday, July 21st, and these pups were born on Wednesday, so they're three days old. And we're going to give you a little intro to Brooke and, Cl and Cliff's litter. All right, so let's start with girls. Ladies first, right? <laughs> let's see here. We'll start here with yellow. So we have three girls and three boys in this litter. Their color at this age is looking very deep. Um, I think they're going to be really dark, which um, Brooke is a really dark Vesla. Cliff has a little bit of the lighter coloring. And so far, it's looking like these pups got mama's coloring. They're looking really, really dark. Um, and they were also very big. These puppies were, even the smallest puppy in this litter at birth was the size of what our big puppies usually are at birth. So Brooke had really big and really strong puppies. <laughs> Yellow's going to sing to you. She thinks I should be mama. Um, anyway, they're really big and really strong. Actually, within just a couple hours of being born, I was seeing these puppies start to get up um, on all four feet and kind of hold themselves up while nursing instead of just laying there to nurse, which is very unusual. So they are big and strong and dark. And let's give you a little intro to each one. So here is our yellow girl, growing and doing wonderful, sticking her tongue out at you, apparently. Are you a little bit sassy? Huh? Maybe. <laughs> um, and we're just going to show you their markings as well, because the markings show up a lot better at this age. By the time it's time for these puppies to go home, their coats start to transition into um, not quite their adult coat. They go through a few sets of coats <laughs> before they get to their adult coat but they will be in a transition phase when it's time to go home. And their fur on their tummy and stuff like that is gonna be really thin at going home age. And so it's really best to show the markings to you now. So we'll go ahead and do that and then you can refer back to them um, at selection time as well. So she's not gonna like me very much for holding her head up, but we're gonna look and see there's no markings there in the throat area. She does have, I'm oh, sorry, sweetheart. She does have a medium-sized marking right here around the calic of her chest, right there. She is solid on her front paws. And if we look at her back paws, they're not distinct white markings. They're not as white as this here on her chest. They're what I call a frosting. They're more like a highlight. Um, both back feet have a couple of toes there that are definitely going to have a little bit of a highlight to them. Um, so those are yellow's markings. Let me give you a bit of an intro to markings on Vieslas. So Vieslas can be marked or they can be solid. Now all of these puppies are marked to some extent. Um, most of their markings are very light, which both mom and dad are unmarked Vieslas. Both Vieslas are solid for mom and dad, but in creating the Viesla breed, there were you know a, a variety of dogs that were mixed to create this breed, and some of those breeds were marked dogs, and so that's why you see markings coming through on some of the pups, even though mom and dad are not solid. Let's show you pink here, and I'll continue to kind of explain markings to you as we go. So she is solid under the chest, or I mean under the chin. She has just <laughs> sorry, sweetheart. It's lunch time, huh? She has just, <laughs> if I can get her to hold her feet out of the way, the slightest, I'm really not hurting her, she just does not want to be restrained. The slightest marking right here on her calic. I don't know if that will even show up on the camera. That is one that is so faint, it may stay as she grows. Sometimes these little tiny faint ones actually go away as they mature, so I'm not sure what hers will do. Solid on the front paws. And... There's one frosted toe on the back right foot and two frosted toes on the back left foot. So she is going to be very close to a solid Vesla. Um, you know, those may, every one of those markings could fade, they could stay. She's kind of in that unknown zone. As far as markings go, they are within breed standard as long as they are confined to the chest or the toes. Um, anywhere else is actually outside of breed standard. It's not necessarily uncommon um, to have some occasionally show up other places. Again, 
that is just coming through from the breeds that were used to create this breed. Um, so it's not unheard of to have them be other places. As far as show dogs go, which when I say show dogs, I mean competing for the prettiest dog contest. As far as show dogs go or breeding dogs, you want to make sure if they're marked that the markings are within breed standard, which actually means Till here would not qualify as that. She does have a marking that is outside of breed standard. So let me show that to you to just show you what I mean. If we lift up her chin, she has, and this could fade. This is a faint one. So she has a faint line right here across her throat. If that shows up in the camera, that could fade. It could stay. It's one of those markings that's not real definite, so it could go either way. But that is an example of a marking that's just coming um, from the nature of the breed, from the, the dogs that were used to create this breed, but it is technically outside of breed standard. Let me show you the rest of her markings. So she is solid on the front paws. She has the slightest hint of a highlight, maybe, right here on this toe. I'm not even sure if that's gonna be a highlight or not. It might be just the light catching. Um, that's very, very faint if it's gonna be anything. And if we check her chest, she has just the tiniest little calic right there on the chest. Again, it's so, so small. <laughs> if I can get her to hold still with that hurting her. Right there by that calic. It's so, so small, it could fade. So again, she's in that, that situation where her markings are so faint, they may stay, um, they may fade. They could really go either way. Um, and so she, in effect, is over the most part going to have the effect of a solid visla, but she does have those very faint markings. Again, I would not suggest breeding or show for her with that out of breed standard marking. Um, you know, but that's not going to impact personality, temperament, health, any of those things. Um, and you actually could still compete in things such as hunting trials, dock jumping, obedience, agility, you know, any of those other competition events that aren't based off of just cosmetic looks. Um, she would do fine for those as well. All right, so that finishes up our girls. Let's move on to our boys. Gray is trying to scoot away from me, so we'll grab him before he gets out of reach. So here is our gray boy, and he's gonna squirm. They all think it's time to eat. These puppies are pigs, they love to eat. Um, so if we look at him, he's solid in the throat. He does have a definite marking right here in the chest. It's kind of, hooks around up here to the left like that. That is a definite enough marking that one will for sure stay. He is solid on the front paws. And if I can get him to hold still. If we look at these back paws, they're looking solid. There's a chance a highlight might develop on this back right. Again, it might just be the light. It's so faint it's hard to know um, whether that's just the light catching or not. But, you know, for sure this little hook shape marking right there on his chest. The folklore around Vislas is that the marked dogs are better hunters. <laughs> I have not scientifically proven that, but that is the folklore um, with this breed that a lot of the hunters like the marked dogs. So we've done gray. Let's, let's, here's red, another boy. I'll show you red. So here is our red boy. They're just so darn cute. <laughs> right now their eyes are shut, I should explain. Probably most of you know this, but if you're not familiar with young puppies, they're obviously awake. <laughs> but yes, their eyes are closed. Um, puppies are born with their eyes sealed shut, and their ears are also sealed shut. Right now their ears are really small for their heads. If you look at an adult Vizsla, you know, their ears are gonna hang clear down here. These ears are really small. They're really thick and almost a waxy feel to them. Uh, and they're sealed shut. There is no ear canal open in there. At, oh, it's usually a couple weeks, two to three weeks old, um, somewhere in there, depending on, you know, just the individual puppy, that their eyes and their ears will open. And so at that point, they start to explore a lot more of their world and have more senses. And they open almost simultaneously at the same time. As they grow, we'll see these ears start to get thinner and bigger. Um, and they'll grow into kind of more of their adult shape. So let's roll him over and take a look at him. So he's solid in the throat. He has even a bigger marking 
that line down the chest there on his chest. We have solid front paws. And let's do, buddy, a little bit of frosting on this back foot, I think. Again, very, very faint, um, but there might be a little bit of frosting there on that back foot. All right. Are you going to go to sleep on my lap, Gray? You can't find Mama? Where did she go? Right now, these pups are um, dependent entirely upon their sense of smell. It's the only sense, well, they, I mean, they can feel me touching them, but, you know, they can't see, they can't hear. They're, they're dependent entirely upon their sense of smell, and it is very well developed in a puppy. That's actually how they find their mother. They can smell where she is, even in this whelping box. Um, they can smell which direction they need to go to find her, even though they can't hear her or see her. And they can actually tell by their smell, um, they, they smell for the milk. So they can tell if they're at her back or if they're at her belly. And they can work their way around and find their dinner entirely on their sense of smell. So they're very frustrated and confused right now because they're like, where did she go? All right, Blue is our last boy to show you. He's going to stretch, yes. Okay, let's show him to you. Again, he's going to be mad at me. I'm really not hurting him. <laughs> so there's nothing in his throat area. He has the smallest chest marking for the boys. It's just a little one right here around that calic. That's one. It's a little darker than the girls, a little bigger than the girls. So it, my guess would be that one will stay, but it's small enough it possibly could fade solid front and solid back so very very lightly marked just that one little tiny calic may fade may stay <laughs> and he wants his mama um so that's kind of an introduction there to the litter let me grab yellow and bring her over by the others maybe she won't cry so much if she snuggles um an introduction to the litter really really happy with them again biggest puppies we've had at birth really good sized healthy puppies um, not a huge number of puppies in the litter Brooke before has had more puppies than this and her belly was big enough we thought there would be more in this litter as well but it was just you know fewer puppies that were bigger big strong dark puppies um, growing really well really happy with them beautiful really happy with what we see um, today they will be going to get their tails docked so breed standard for a Vizsla, you can see right here, I'll show you on pink. They have, you know, just quite long tails at birth. But a Vizsla's tail gets really thin at the end. Thinner than say a lab or something like that. Um, we had a lab, my husband had a lab growing up and <laughs> if you've ever been whipped by a lab tail, you know their tails are thick and strong. Um, a Vizsla's tail gets much thinner. And so breed standard on, on these dogs is actually to dock them at two thirds. Most pointers are actually docked at a third, so you'd only leave a little bit of a tail. For a Vizsla, breed standard is to dock and leave two thirds. So that's about what will be happening today at the vet, is just to take off that thin little tip. And they say the reason that that's breed standard is because they can actually break their tails. Um, an active dog out running through the brush and that kind of thing can actually be prone to tail injury. So that is why that is breed standard in these dogs. Let me show you on red. We will also be taking off the dew claws. So those are basically a thumb on the front foot of, of a dog right here. Some breeds are born without them, some have them. Um, Vizslas are usually born with them. You can see that little tiny thumb there. That will just be snipped right off. Um, again, the reason for that is these are very active dogs, especially if they're used for hunting. But even if you're just hiking or, you know, a runner or whatever, they get out running through weeds and brush and being adventurous, and they can actually rip that dew claw off, which is much more traumatic than just removing it. Um, and so that is why it's breed standard to do that as well. Both procedures are done between three and five days of age. These pups are three days old today, so perfect timing to go and get those done. The reason it's done at that age is they say that their nervous system is not fully developed yet, and so they don't actually have full sensation. So, um, I mean, honestly, you know, they squill when the vet does it, but you saw how much they were squilling with me just showing you their markings. Most of their upset about it is just that they have to be tightly restrained in order to keep them still. Um, but that they don't have full sensation because their nervous system isn't fully developed, which really does kind of make sense. I mean, they can't hear, they can't see, 
you know, they are not fully developed in that way yet. And so that is why the timing of it is you make sure and do it at the three to five age marks to where it's not um, a super painful and traumatic experience for them. Um, and honestly, once we get them home and put them back with mama, they honestly don't even act like they know anything has happened. As soon as they're with mama, they're happy again. We don't experience a lot of whimpering or crying or discomfort. Um, we've never had one get any infection or anything like that. So it does seem kind of sad to do. Um, and I, it's, it's not our favorite part of doing it, but you know, there is a reason behind why it's done for the, for the good of the dog. And it is done at a time when scientifically speaking, they say it's really not very traumatic on them. So they will be going to get that done today and the vet will have a chance to just look them over and see what he thinks about them. Um, but you know, I've, I've seen a few puppies <laughs> and these pups are really healthy. They're really big. They're growing really well. They have nice round tummies. Um, you know, if a pup's not getting fed well, they're going to be caving in and looking real thin. All of these pups, I mean, even if you look right here, she's got this nice little pooch coming out. Oh, now I'm tickling her and she's wiggling. Her belly's not caving up in, it's curving out and around, um, you know, which is the sign of a well-fed puppy. So they're doing great, Mama is doing great, and I'm just really, really happy with them, and happy to introduce you to these pups. You may see a little bit of striping in a few of these puppies. And that is pretty normal at this age. When Vislas are born, they actually look like a tiger. They call them their tiger stripes. Oh, we have some fuzzies on here. And they call them their tiger stripes when they're born. They have very definite striping at birth. And as mama licks them and cleans them off, you know, that starts to go away. And sometimes for a few days, you'll still be able to see a little remnant of striping in their coat. Um, but that usually, you know, will just continue to go away as they grow and develop. <laughs> and again, these are super dark puppies. Vislas can range anywhere from a strawberry blonde with only a hint of red into this super dark. So this is about the darkest I've seen in puppies. Um, and Brooke, like I say, is a very dark Vizsla, so I think these pups at, at maturity are going to have mama's dark coat. So there's quite a range of color that they can be in. The original Vizslas actually were blonde, um, more of the blonde color. So, you know, there, it's just a matter of preference, just like markings. That's really a matter of preference. You can have marked Vizslas, you can have unmarked Vizslas. Um, some of the hunters prefer the marked, like I said. Other people prefer the marked just because it gives some individuality to a breed that tends to look a lot alike. You know, a lot of people look at a Vizsla and can't tell one from another. Um, being as experienced with them as we are, you know, even if you took the collars off of my dogs, I could identify my dogs. Um, but, you know, to a lot of people, they think that they all look alike. So oftentimes our marked Vizslas are actually the first ones to go. Um, I think this is the first litter we've ever had that every puppy was marked. Usually we have some solid and some marked in each litter, but it is not uncommon for the marked ones actually to be the very first ones selected because a lot of people like that it gives just a faint, you know, like I said, you, a lot of these you're going to have to look to see their markings, but it gives that little hint of individuality um, that makes their dog unique. So again, that's just preference. Same thing with coat color. Um, the original Vizslas were actually more blonde. Um, they're Hungarian, for those of you, you probably already know that. They come from Hungary. Um, during the World Wars, they were actually almost went extinct. And one man is credited with saving the breed, and he got his dogs, I think it was about a dozen, I think he had about 12 dogs, and he got them across the border. And he is credited with saving the breed. But that then meant they had a very, very narrow gene pool to work with. So they started bringing other breeds in and mixing those with the remaining beasts they had to get enough genetic diversity to safely bring the breed back. Um, and that's when you started seeing the darker colors. So there actually were not super good records kept. <laughs> so there is some debate. Some people say it was Irish Setter. Other people are like, they're too short of a coat. It couldn't have been Irish Setter. Um, anyway, there weren't super great records kept. But at that point that they started bringing the breed back is when you started to see more of the red coming into them and more of the darker color. 
So um, that's why you'll see such a range. Most visas are somewhere in the middle. I have seen some that are extremely light with only a hint of red. And you know, then there's others like Brooke that are just super, super dark. Looks like that's what these visas, these pups here are gonna be. Again, just a matter of preference um, and what you like, but they're beautiful. I'm very, very happy with what I'm seeing in these pups so far. Um, happy with their growth, happy with their energy level, their behavior, um, their contentment, all of those kinds of things that we watch at this age to make sure that they're thriving and doing well. Um, red here is actually asleep. It can be hard to tell <laughs> on a weasel puppy if they're awake or asleep because their eyes are always shut. He's holding still enough he's asleep, but if you watch him, every once in a while you'll see him kind of jerk or twitch. Um, and if you're not aware that that's a good thing, it might startle you, he just did it there. That's actually a good thing. A puppy that does not twitch in their sleep like that is, is a concern. Um, it's a sign that their nervous system is growing and developing properly if you see them twitch and jerk like that, and Teal just did it. Um, if you see them twitch and jerk like that in their sleep, that's actually a good thing. So as we show you videos, as we progress with this litter and they're asleep and you see them twitching and jerking around, um, it's not seizures, it's not you know anything of concern. It's actually a reassuring thing to us that they're growing and developing as we would like them to do. So there you go, Brook and Cliff's litter, um, three days old and we're just thrilled with them.